Greetings all. This presentation is on context and context groups. And let me turn the camera here. Greetings all. All right, here we go. Uh, we'll start off with the, con the Cornell note that I wrote, which is later in the presentation. Here is the essential question. How do you use context and context clues to understand unfamiliar words? Right? Good. The standard and objective of the lesson, language 7.4, determine or clarify the meaning of unknown and multiple meaning words and phrases by using context clues. All right, there we have it. We are on context again. So it's important that we also look at the definition of context and gather information. And one of the great places to do that today is the Internet, is using a search engine such as Google. Context. And then we also have how you pronounce the word context as well right there. This is dictionary.com. The circumstances that form the setting for an event, statement, or idea, and in terms of which it can be fully understood and assessed. Also on dictionary.com, the parts of a discourse that surround a word or a passage and can throw light on its meaning. Here we go. This was also on the internet. The semiotics, linguistics, sociology, and anthropology. Context refers to those objects or entities which surround a focal event in these disciplines. Typically, a communicative event of some kind. Context is a frame that surrounds this event and provides resources for its appropriate interpretation. So once we've gathered the information about context, about the focal point of the lesson, we need to, uh, what I like to do is come up with my own definition, right? By adding parts together to make things clear. So here's my, one of my definitions that I wrote. This is the longer one. And in the Cornell note, you'll see the shorter one that I think is more suitable for students. Context, the background, frame, or circumstances that form the setting for an event, Statement, idea, or unfamiliar word that makes that event, statement, idea, or unfamiliar word fully, clearly, and precisely understood as it was originally said, intended, or meant. And there we have it, folks. Context, right? So we see that that's the background. That's the setting. Let's see the presentation now. So slide one. Oh, before I do that, it's kind of like a brief. Um, oh, no, we have that in the next slide anyway. Next couple slides. You'll watch the video here. I'll set up a video link for slide two. Uh, we will be using the I do, we do, you do method. I do slides one through ten. We do slide 11, which is the Cornell note. And I've uploaded that for you. And for time sake, uh, I won't present that. You'll just write it down. Right. Uh, the Cornell note presented in the video. Actually, I took a picture of it. And then we do the slide. 12. We do the slides 12 through 18. Let me correct that right now. Oh, I can't. I'll correct it later. You do. Slide 19. 
Google Forms on using context clues. What is going on in this piece? And we see the piece there. We see different colors. What is that, a sunset? Kind of wondering, is that an atmos atmospheric? We wonder what it is. We can see that this is part of a puzzle. Make a guess and imagine what kind of a puzzle it belongs to. And you make your guess and you've seen it there. And here's the puzzle. We see it's a landscape. There's what we saw. It fits right in there in the edge of the puzzle. Right? We see that it's part of the sky. It's part of these chain of mountains. And it's part of the forest. Three parts to that one piece there. But it helps, really helps to see the background, to see the frame, to see the setting that that puzzle piece belongs to. And now it is easily understood what it is. Here we have it. Now that we see the puzzle, we can understand the puzzle piece in its proper context. The context is what surrounds the puzzle piece, the mountains, the sky, and the forest. Now that we have seen where the puzzle piece belongs, we understand the role it plays in its surroundings, the puzzle. And we understand the role its surroundings plays in it. Therefore, understanding is like the screws in the legs of a table. If there are missing screws in the legs of the table, the table will not be sturdy and will fall apart. Thus, understanding is based on the comprehension of words. If you do not understand certain words, you will not understand what has been written that you read or what has been spoken that you hear. However, you can use context clues to help you get a glimpse at the meaning of an unfamiliar word. Take, for example, the following word in the next slide. And there we have it. The word is, we see clearly, is celestial. Celestial. Right? Now, let's see the unfamiliar word in its proper context. Celestial bodies, including the sun, moon, and stars, have fascinated man through centuries. Without that sentence, it would be difficult. If you've never, if you had never seen that word before, without that sentence, you couldn't really even make a guess. First, let us decide what part of speech the word celestial belongs to. A noun is a person, place, or thing. A verb is an action. An adjective is a word that describes a noun. An adverb is a word that modifies a verb. An adjective or another adverb. Now, what part of speech is the word celestial? The word celestial is an adjective because it describes a noun. The word celestial is describing bodies. So what kind of bodies are these? Let us look at the sentence again. Celestial bodies, including the sun, moon, and stars, have fascinated man through the centuries. By using the hints in the sentence, we understand that celestial is related to the sun, the moon, and the stars. Therefore, these celestial bodies are objects in the sky or heavens. We use the hints in the sentence, context clues, to help us understand what the word celestial means. Related to the skies and heavens. Right, and there's our um, Cornell note there on slide 11. And the reason that it's important to take Cornell notes is that you'll remember the lesson better. So it's important for you to have a notebook. And in my class, 
I expect you to have a notebook of notes. And I've shown you exactly what to write. And so this is the we do part, right? I write, you write. So now that I've written, you write. And this is something that we would do in class together live. But I just wanted to demonstrate that I actually wrote the notes and I expect you to write the notes as well. All right, there we have it. What is this boy doing? And again, we really can't tell what he's doing without the proper context. We need the setting, we need the background, we need the frame. We need the context. Those are all synonyms for the word context. Okay, is the boy drawing, measuring, playing marbles, petting a dog? And those are guessings that guesses that you can make. Now we see the boy in the proper or the young man in his proper context. And we see that he is changing attire. By putting the image of the boy into his proper context, we understand what he is doing. The background reveals everything that we need to know. We know that he is changing his tire on the street, and we know much more than that because of the picture. We know what type of car he drives. We know that it's not raining and that it's a sunny day. Many more things. This is why they say a picture is worth a thousand words. What does scale mean? Part of the outer covering of a fish, an instrument for weighing, a series of musical notes. Just as you cannot tell what the boy is really doing until you see him in place, in the picture, the word scale has no exact meaning without a sentence. A word is just like a puzzle piece until you see or hear what context it is being used in. What does scale mean in the following sentence? By piling the old wooden cartons, one on top of another, and climbing on top of the stack, Jen and Frank managed to scale the high stone wall and drop down on the other side. So this is still on the I do, we do part. So what we, we would do this together and we would underline Everything that helps us understand what scale means here. Uh, this presentation will end in about a minute. As I explain this, and then we will be in the you do portion. So, we would underline piling. We would underline one on top of another. We would double underline climbing. Right? Uh, also, on top of the stack. Then we will underline manage to scale the high stone wall. Underline drop down on the other side. All of this gives us clue to the fact that when it says Jen and Frank managed to scale the high stone wall, we, uh, we visualize them piling the old wooden cartons, right? One on top of another. And it says climbing on top of the stack. Right. So scale in this case is a synonym for climb. And we can see that by using context clues and we used synonyms to help us determine, determine the meaning of the unfamiliar word. There we have it. That's what I just did there. And that slide underlying the context clues. You will do this slide on your own, underline the context clues in B and C. And then finally, you will do the assessment for context clues. Click the link below and complete the Google form. Awesome. We're done. And I'm pretty sure you got a better grip, grip on what context means and how to use context clues. Have a great day.